at what happens when little itty bitty baby grease over here with that alligator claw comes up against one of the largest empires in history the Persian Empire and we're gonna see two of our key phrases from this year our enemies are always watching and united we stand divided we fall come together in this war that we're going to see fought between basically little baby David and huge Goliath over here. And it matters because although it was large and powerful, the Persian empire could not defeat the Greeks. And we're gonna see our buddies Sparta and Athens kind of taking the lead here. But before we do, it's important for us to understand a little bit about Persia. So in the 500s BC, the Persians were building a powerful empire in Southwest Asia. So notice we're right in this area of Mesopotamia. We've been in this area before, almost all the way over here to India and of course down into Egypt. Persia was located in the modern day country of Iran. And you've heard a lot about them in the news recently, right up here. So this is a culture, when you hear about it in the news, it's been around for thousands of years. A talented king named Cyrus built a strong empire or a strong army and began creating one of the largest empires in world history. And we see everything from roads to all sorts of things controlling this empire. And again, I want you to look at how big this empire is, all of this green area compared to Greece. All right. Now, Cyrus is one of these leaders that is considered one of history's great right so we read in his biography that he treated conquered people very well please underline he was successful as empire as emperor because he treated conquered people well so when he conquered an area he didn't force them to adopt adopt his own customs and he didn't mistreat them he let people keep their own ideas and religions for example he let them keep wor worshiping their own gods he let people who had been slaves in Babylon return to their homeland so because of these, the people who, con who he conquered didn't resent him for the most part. In fact, they greatly respected him. So he conquered much of Southwest Asia and he let them keep their own customs and religions. Right. Sorry guys, I had to take a quick break there for announcements. Few people rebelled against him and his empire remained really stable because of this respect. So I want you to answer this hot question. Do you think that he deserves the title of the Great? Why or why not? Now, as the empire expanded, its size made it difficult to manage. So Cyrus was pretty smart and he left his empire to his grandson, Darius I. And Darius I was also a very strong leader. He divided his empire into provinces or kind of like states ruled by one of our vocabulary words, satraps or governors, who collected taxes, recruited soldiers, and judged legal cases. And so if we look up here, we can see some of these satraps. And so we see all of these little states. There's one here, down in Egypt, all the way along. So it made it easier to kind of control and have somebody who knew what was happening in each area. So here's going to be where we see big giant Persia coming into conflict with little baby Greece. So here's Greece over here. We see some familiar faces like Sparta and Athens and just the very corner of the Persian empire, okay? That huge empire. What's important to understand is all of these little areas over here are Greek speaking colonies. We talked about how the Greeks sent colonies out but now they're on the edge of the Persian Empire. And, they, and they're one of the few people who don't really like Persian control because we know those Greeks are very independent. So we're going to see them starting to rebel. Burp, burp, erase. So the Greek city-states in the Persian Empire fought for their independence and they asked other city-states, other polises like Athens to help. So those other Greek city-states sent their navies, and we know Athens had that really strong navy to fight against the Persians. The Persians were not fans of this. They felt like Greece was 
um, interfering in their business. And so Darius the first was enraged. He was angered and it caused him to invade Greece for revenge. We're going to look at a couple major battles here. So make sure you're filling out the chart as we go, but don't worry if you're not, um, if, if the battles are a little broad because we're going to get into more detail about them in class. So here's kind of our area where most of our Persian wars are fought. And again, we're just looking at the very, very tip of the Persian Empire, just part of it. But even this one part is huge compared to all of the Greek polices right here. So we've got a huge, huge, huge empire. Nobody expected the Greeks to be able to win, especially because they were so isolated and divided. We're going to look at four major battles and see how they went here. The first one is going to be the Battle of Marathon, and this is Athens versus Persia, led by Darius. Now, Marathon took place on this tiny little beach, and nobody expected Athens to win, but because they knew the territory and they had better strategies and the Persians kind of didn't really take them as seriously as they could, they managed to outflank them and the Athenians won. And we can tell it was a huge battle just based on these numbers. Now, Marathon was about 23 miles away from Athens and they sent a runner all the way back to Athens to tell of the great victory. And the story goes, with all of that hilly terrain, this runner made it all the way into the city-state of Athens, announced, we've won this great victory, and then he dropped dead. So this marathon that you or somebody else you know might run, um, this 26.2 mile run, is in commemoration of this Greek battle. Cultural diffusion. So... So Athens ends up being the winner, and the Persians kind of turn tail and go home for 10 years, but they vow revenge on the Greeks. How dare you mess with us? We're the best empire in the world. I want you to draw a line between the Battle of Marathon, led by Darius, and then I want you to circle 10 years, because we've got right here this battle, and then these three are all going to happen later. So the next battle is one you might have heard of, depending on your movie watching, the Battle of Thermopylae, sometimes called the Battle of the Hot Gates. And this is all of Greece. Greece managed to unite versus Persia. And Persia is led by a new ruler, Xerxes. This is Darius's son. And he is coming back for revenge. Now, here's Thermopylae right here. So the Persians are going to try to come in and take over. And their goal is to get, let me erase all this, their goal is to get to Athens, okay? So they're going to send their boats this way and their troops over land. And they want to destroy Athens here, okay? That's their goal. Now, let me show you a little bit more of a close-up. What happens is the Spartans kind of take control of the land battle. The Athenians use their navy and the Spartans take control and they find this little narrow mountain pass. And a group of just a few hundred Spartans lead the charge. They have several different um, armies from other polices as well. And they manage to block off the Persian attack for three whole days. So here's the Persians. The Persians are the red. And the Athenians, or the uh, Spartans rather, and all the Greeks stop them because they've got the mountains on one side and then on the other side is the water. So they've got a tiny, narrow little passageway. And the Persian army, even though it's bigger, just can't get through. It wasn't until a Greek trader showed the Persians a little tiny mountain path through behind where the Greeks were camped out that the Persians were able to get around. And so it was three whole days. And even though the Persians won the battle, it gave the Athenians time to get out of town and be safe. So our winner is Persia, but Persian burns out, the Persians burn Athens to the grounds, but the Athenians escape because the Spartans delay them so much. After that, our next battle is going to be Salamis, and this is a naval battle. So we have boats, okay? And we have the Greeks 
bringing the Persians, kind of tempting them into this little narrow passageway and then springing out on them. And then the Persians get stuck and they can't turn around. So the Athenians take the lead here and they use their tactics and their knowledge of the area to win. And the Persian Navy was almost completely destroyed. So the Persians were getting a little too big for the britches here. They really underestimated the Greeks. The last battle, the Battle of Plataea, is one more where we see united we stand, divided we fall. And it's all of the Greeks versus the Persian army. So at first, the Greeks all were kind of camped out in different places on this plane. And the Persians were making easy work of them, just attacking them one by one. But when the Persians, or when the Greeks united, they beat the Persians. And so Athens and the other Greeks ended up winning. So the Greeks defeated the Persians, the Persians went home, and Greece is victorious, in large part because of Athens' navy and Sparta's strong army. So the two of them kind of end up being the heroes of the day, the MVPs of this war. So after the war, Athens especially becomes a really rich, powerful polis. They end up making a lot of money off this war and start a golden age of well-being. And we know a golden age is a time where education and everything just really flourishes, really grows. And this is under their leader, Pericles. They become the center of Greek culture. All the best thinkers go there, all the best artists coming out of there. And so we see Athens going up. We see the Persians, though, starting to decline, starting to go down. They were no longer strong enough to defend their entire empire. And people don't like when their government loses. So they grew unhappy with their government. And soon we're going to see Persia becoming open to outside attacks. In our next video notes, we'll see what happens when Athens, just like Persia, gets a little bit too comfortable with being the biggest guy around and it causes some problems with other people in Greece who think they deserve power too. But for now, the Greeks have beat back the Persians, they have stood united, and little baby Greece, you can barely see it on this map, this little green, has beat the entire Persian Empire. So they're pretty happy with how things have gone in this war, even if it took many years. We'll see what comes up next, guys. Make sure you're taking all those notes, and we'll talk again soon. Have a great night.